Even though the term has been around since World War II, I was first introduced to the acronym FUBAR back in 1989 in the action movie Tango and Cash. Now, Netflix is bringing a series with that same acronym as its title, and it's cast Arnie in the lead. Will this series be a hit, or is it going to be a snafu? A CIA operative on the edge of retirement discovers a family secret and is called back into the field for one last job. So in addition to Arnold Schwarzenegger, FUBAR stars Monica Barbaro, who you'll probably recognize as Phoenix from Top Gun Maverick. Now, they're the father-daughter duo that leads this eight-episode series, and they really began to grow on me over the first few episodes. The series also stars Millen Carter, Gabriel Luna, Fortune Feimster, Travis Van Winkle, Aparna Brielle, and Fabiana Udinho. Then we get small story insertions from Barbara Eve Harris, Jay Baruchel, Andre Buckley, Devin Bostick, and Scott Thompson. Now, if you go into this show like I did at the start, you'll probably be in for just some huge disappointment. This is not a serious spy show or even a serious action series. I mean, very little about this is serious, even though the elements sometimes want to convince you that they are. Now, a couple of episodes in, I started looking at this in the vein of Chuck, where every scenario is just slightly absurd and weirdly unlikely to happen in real life, especially with the globe hopping and the constant danger that is tackled by one small team. Same goes here. In FUBAR, the situations are exaggerated, and it appears that the only group within the CIA able to handle any sort of issue is this group of highly sarcastic and wildly inappropriate operatives. And once I started approaching the series with a less serious eye, the show became fun and somewhat engaging. Now, I wasn't hooked immediately, and there were times all throughout that I wondered why I kept watching. But then as the episode would end, I found myself connecting with the characters even more and enjoying their antics and their chemistry. And so much of this series is held up by coincidence and story convenience, placing our characters in the exact right spot to execute an action with little to no issue. This actually didn't bother me, though. The jokes, they do get tiresome a bit, especially when the same juvenile humor is used over and over, but there's enough variety to the characters that I was able to lock in on my favorites and then could go with the flow on the rest. Now, because this is an Arnold project, <laughs> there are a ton of small and even large Easter eggs that point to either films that he's worked on or people he's worked with. Now, several times I had a huge smile on my face when I would see or hear one of those Easter eggs. And one in particular comes about in episode five, I think. And it is so fun to have this one included. Now for the story, it's fairly simple and straightforward. But I also like that the whole season follows one arc so that there's a great deal of continuity that's created. I also appreciate that over the course of the show, we get to know almost all of the players really well. Now one or two of them might still be mysteries to us, but they're also designed to be that way. Now there is one story element that may or may not become very obvious to you. I picked it out the moment that it was introduced, but I was never 100% certain until the show actually confirmed it. So even though I did guess one of the plot points, the show held it very close to the vest the entire time, and I didn't mind guessing it correctly. Now, something that surprised me in this, though, especially because of how simple the story is, is that the dynamic and the growth that we get to watch between Schwarzenegger and Barbaro, they are antagonistic towards each other, sometimes intentionally, and other times by accident, but there's a great trajectory that we watch form as they go through the story. And I began to root for them, and I wanted them to figure out their issues to provide a somewhat happy resolution. And while not everything becomes sunshine and rainbows, the growth we witness is encouraging. Now, sometimes within the show, certain character interactions felt like they were distractions or maybe afterthought inclusions to the story rather than just fully planned out and intentional, especially when it came to Devin Bostick's character and even Andy Buckley at times. Now, they do have moments that help to feed both the drama and the overall storyline, but because they bounce in and out of the narrative, their inclusion felt disjointed some of the time. Now, I compare this with Chuck, and even though FUBAR is a show made in 2023, the budget for graphics and special effects feel like they were the same that Chuck got. I mean, gunfire, muzzle flashes, even explosions and fire, they're pretty fake looking. And it's not to the point that it's distracting, but certainly noticeable and not to what could be achieved using today's technology. Now, I don't think it's a huge negative, but it could make your eye twitch a bit when you watch people firing automatic weapons and the muzzle flashes, they get a bit out of sync. I think if you're looking for a fun watch and a series that's able to deliver excitement and action without taking itself too seriously, and you want to see snarky interactions between cast members, FUBAR could be a satisfying watch. It's great for something casual and is silly enough to generate some laughs, but has some great heart so that you might just find yourself being sucked into it. 
Each of the episodes is just about an hour long, but they go by quickly, thanks to the fast pace, a lot of action, and then great character chemistry. And while the show finishes one story arc, it leaves room for a continuation should the series be renewed. So overall, FUBAR is a lighthearted spy series that can be very enjoyable as long as it's not taken too seriously. Schwarzenegger and Barbaro have a good dynamic, leading to some heartwarming interactions and funny banner. The overall humor can get tiresome, especially when juvenile jokes become the mainstay, but the cast delivers a good assortment of characters who complement as an ensemble. If you're looking for serious or deep, keep looking. But if you want Arnie chomping on a stogie while blowing stuff up with a young team of special agents, definitely give FUBAR a go. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and a bunch of violence. I give FUBAR Three and a half out of five couches. So do you have a favorite Arnold movie? Let me know what it is in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.